want to share, post, let's rock and roll for Jesus. And oh, welcome, Wednesday night Bible study here at Faith and Victory Church. And uh, <laughs> forgot to turn off the mic again. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. How many years is this now? <laughs> oh, my, 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 my. Well, we're glad to have you tonight. And uh, go ahead and share this out on Facebook and uh, let your friends know about us and welcome them uh, to tonight's service. Praise the Lord. So glad to be with you. Uh, Jesus is Lord. And the. Uh, God is good all the time, and uh, whatever else we can say that's good. Hallelujah. We're, we're grateful that um, we, we live in the kingdom of God. And uh, with all the craziness in the world and all the junk of the world and all the things that are going on, God is exalted. Jesus is Lord. We have the victory through him. Hallelujah. And we have victory over dogs barking. Hallelujah. And... Um, I know y'all hear it. I, I listened to some of the last weeks, and I can hear the dogs out there barking. Hallelujah. So, glory to God. Amen. Well, we're, um, we're, we're still rejoicing. I Hopefully, some of y'all did a happy dance since Sunday uh, when we announced the uh, hitting our building fund goal of $65,000, uh, up from the previous week of 21. Hallelujah. Um, I, I, I do regret that we did not have a camera facing the congregation recording uh, y'all's reaction um, because it was a funny sight to behold. Uh, I've never seen that many people uh, like look like deer in headlights at one time in my life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And um, so we welcome you and we're still dancing and rejoicing, but we, you know, now we're moving forward. Hallelujah. And believing God for our, our own home and place. And hallelujah. And being in a position that's never before to be able to go and to, uh, make offers without having to, oh, we got to go raise money. We got money sitting in the bank. That is so good. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, so uh, we're, we've been talking and sharing along confession, the word, and uh, so we're going to just keep continuing to segue into that and uh, begin uh, sharing about your words, you know, we talk about, you know, and your tongue and your future. Hallelujah. And um, I, I think that we could be all, all of us could be um, benefited by being reminded of the importance of um, being people of faith and speaking words of faith. Glory to God. Uh, James chapter 3, verse 2 through 6, verses 2 through 6. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect or mature man, and able to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, are driven by fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. And uh, even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature as it is set on fire of hell. We need to um, understand, we've been talking about confession, talking about uh, getting our words from the right place and so forth, that the words are the seeds that start the press process of how we live. Words are the seeds that start the process of how we live. Your tongue, it says here, you know, it governs, it governs your body. It governs how you do things. It governs things. So we need, we need to be aware that the words we speak with our tongue are establishing our future. Two things that we all must understand before we can be a man or woman of faith and power. We like to be, you know, we like the power side, don't we? Anybody out there like the power side? Hallelujah. Two things we need to understand 
in order to be a man or woman of faith and of power. Number one, all right, write this down. This is so important. No one has a choice of whether or not they live by words. By thy words thou art justified, by thy words thou art condemned. But you have the choice of what words you live by. Let's write that down. Think about that. Nobody has a choice as to whether or not you live by words. So your words, your tongue, your is your future. You are establishing by the things you say. As a man thinketh in his heart, amen, so is he. We speak out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And we've talked about for a few weeks now, getting, you know, going to the word of God, meditating in the word of God, feeding on the word of God, so that it, it begins to control our thought processes and how we, how we think and how we speak. So everybody lives by the words that they speak. That's just, you know, God created it that way. God created it. We're, we, we, we make declaration. God created a, all the creation um, by speaking. And God said, the law of Genesis, chapter 1. And God said, let there be light. And God said, let the, you know, um, let the waters do this. God said, let the, 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 the uh, cattle come. Let the fowls come. And God said, and God said, and God said, and God said. You see? It's the law of Genesis. Creation was created by the words of God. And God created us to function the same way. We function out of the things we say. So, as a matter of fact, the Bible says there in Genesis where it says in the Hebrew, uh, God created man from the dust of the ground, breathed into, his, breathed into him, and he became a living soul. That, that phrase uh, is a Hebraism that really meant a speaking spirit. Speaking spirit. So the things that we say are governing our lives. That's why James chapter 3, verses 2 through 6 says that the tongue, hallelujah, boasteth great things. And he, he likened it to the bit in the horse's mouth and the helm of a, of a ship, the rudder uh, controlling the ship. The tongue is a thing that controls our life. So that meaning we live by words. Uh, so number one, um, you have their choice as to whether or not you live by words. Number two, you do have the choice of what words you live by. In other words, it becomes impressed upon you as to the things that are in your heart in abundance that you speak. That's why Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 said, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Notice Joshua 1 8 is saying, keep the word in your mouth so that you will be prosperous and you'll have good success. Um, Again, that last phrase there means uh, to deal wisely in the affairs of life. Okay? So speaking the word of God brings good success. But I can tell you, you speak unbelief and it'll bring bad stuff. Um, you know, I, I think sometime, uh, well, I, I don't know if it's this month. Anyway, Elvis died, you know, whenever he died. He died at the same age that his mother died. And I remember uh, hearing J.D. Sumner one time say, if Elvis said it once, he said it 10,000 times, he would never live past the age that his mother lived. And he died the exact same age. You know, so um, w he said it so much. He, 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 he believed it. So we, we have to be careful about the words that we do speak. Hallelujah. Now, righteousness will speak. Romans 10, 16 says, but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart who shall descend into heaven, that is, bring Christ down from above. Hallelujah. Then it goes on and talks about um, that we speak the, well, well let's, let's, look, let's look at it. I was, I was cutting that short a little bit. 
I don't want to do that. I just only had part of that in my notes. Let's go ahead and, and read Romans 10. Hallelujah. Thank you all for joining us. Got, um, got someone I grew up with watching. Hi, Jackie. Welcome. Good to have you tonight. Hallelujah. So we look at Romans 10, 6, and it says, The righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall descend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above, or who shall de uh, de descend into the deep, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead, again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of of faith that we preach that if you will confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus the King James says or uh, other translations phrase it this way that Jesus is Lord and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from, when, from the dead thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation confession is made unto salvation so we see here that in the biblical scope of things remember joshua 1 8 again says the word of god should not depart out of your mouth you're to meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein then you'll make your way prosperous then you'll have good success here we have some a similar type new testament scripture that's telling us that it's the word of faith that if we'll confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, we'll be saved. Now, you remember, sozo, a saved is the, in the Greek is sozo, meaning saved, healed, preserved, delivered, prospered, made whole. Um, it's, it's an all-inclusive word. According to Schofield, in his notes in his Bible, uh, as he studied this out in, uh, in, in Greek and in, in history, the word carries an all-inclusive uh, salvation with it okay so whosoever, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is Lord and believe in his heart God raises from the dead shall be saved amen with the mouth confession is made the heart man believes and this is a principle of the kingdom of God this is a principle that God created and created man to be we're to be speaking spirits who speak our future Glory to God. Now, if you get your information from the wrong place, you will say the wrong thing. I guarantee it. I've seen, I've seen um, you know, people try, tell somebody something wrong, and they go out and start repeating it, and everybody be, be, believes something that was wrong, and, uh, and it wasn't right, you know? And, and they start all acting on the wrong information. You act on the wrong information, it can hurt you. Hello? Isn't that, isn't that right? Wrong information can mess you up. We need the right information. Excuse me. Hallelujah. All right. So, um, we have been given divine authority. These are all points you can write down. We have been given divine authority to, use, to speak God's word in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, we see this principle throughout the ministry of Jesus. We see it throughout the writings of, of the New Testament writers. Um, Jesus would say, as the scripture saith, Paul would write and say, you know, the, according as it, as it was spoken or the word of, you know, or the scripture says, the quoting the scripture, speaking God's word. The church has been given authority to speak God's word in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's power in the word of God. There's power to change. Amen. Um, let me see. Uh, it's not my notes. So I'm going to run over here and grab it. Praise the Lord. Look over in the second Corinthians chapter. I believe second Corinthians chapter four. Yes.
Paul writing um, this letter to the church at Corinth. He says in 2 Corinthians 4, starting in verse 16, For which cause we faint not, but, through our, though, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction is but for a moment. And actually, the Greek is atomos. Okay? A, a, an atomic second. It's but, it's but for an atomos. A, a fleeting second. Hallelujah. Working for us a far more exceeding weight. Uh, a, a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And listen to what he says next. While we look not at the things which are seen. Now, what's that telling us? He's saying, while we look not at the circumstances, while we look not at um, the things we're dealing with, doesn't mean they're not real. Doesn't mean we're denying their existence. Okay? He says, while we look not at them, so they're there. Okay? But at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, temporary. The things which are not seen are eternal. What's eternal? Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Now I can tell you, you can have circumstances. You can have circumstances that are staring you in your in eyeball to eyeball. My wife and I went through a, um, we went through a battle about, um, four years, is it four years ago, honey? All that started? Well, it started on my toe in two, 2017. Um, 16. So, okay. Five years ago. It's been in the past five years. We, we went through a battle. Um, my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, and, um, you know, we, we had surgery. And that was, you know, listen, you, you got to follow God and, and how you handle things. But we knew this. She would live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'll never forget that when they uh, uh, first measured this thing on the MRI and so forth, and we came, and our, and our um, her oncologist came into the room post-surgery um, on her follow-up where they, they had gone and done the, um, I don't know, they, call, they don't call it the biopsy, they call it something else where they, they take tissue and they, they um, analyze it. And uh, she put the piece of paper down on the table and said, you got the best report you could have gotten. And uh, she said, I'll see you in a year. We thought, wow, what does that mean? She says, you are cancer free. You don't need hormone therapy. You don't need um, chemotherapy. You don't need radiation. You, we, you're, it's gone. And the numbers, the, the uh, growth, the uh, cancer's area had shrunk to a third of its size. It was only a third the size of the original diagnose, diagnosis. Uh, the pathology report. There you go. The pathology report. Okay. And, um, and then, you know, the, uh, all the other subsequent things you, know, you go through. But we're walking in victory. Then, then I stepped on a nail on, my, on our deck. My toe didn't ever heal up, and then by the uh, of, of um, the fall of that year, um, it, it just absolutely exploded in in um, um, infection. I, I I just thought it was you know I didn't know what it was. All of a sudden, I got a hole in my foot, my toe, uh, about the size of my pinky, all the way down to the bone, and went to the hospital because my my um, I went to the doctor. He said you probably need to go to the hospital, and I went to the hospital and. Guy with infectious disease comes in and says, don't let him eat anything. We're going to have to take this off in the morning. I'm going to cut my toe off. That's what he said anyway. And I'm sitting there going, wait a minute, doc. <laughs> um, he said, this is great. And here's the words he said, this is gangrenous. And uh, I'm like, uh, okay. Um, and uh, then the podiatrist came in a little bit later. And I said, hey, doc. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to argue my case. I'll do everything you tell me to do to save my toe. And uh, he said, I'm not quite sure we're ready to cut it off yet. I said, that's okay. I said, I said I'll, I'll follow every instruction. So they, gave, you know, they put me on um, 
antibiotics. They, they put a pick line in me. I had this little ball with antibiotics in it. Had to do twice a day for six weeks. Um, but I told the doctor, I said, I know how to believe God. I'll do what you tell you. you. You do your part. I know how to believe God. And uh, every time I'd go back to the doctor, I had to go every, uh, every week for a while, then every two weeks, over four months. But every time I'd go to the doctor, it was always a little bit better. Was, he'd say, well, you're not out of the woods, but, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, and they, they kept saying that. And then they finally put me on two weeks coming back, you know, and so forth. And, I, and I'd look at the doctor. I'd say, look, I told you. I'm doing it. He says, he says, you know, whatever you're doing, keep doing it, you know. And we were doing all the natural things we needed to do. I said, I know how to believe God. Hallelujah. And, uh, and then when we got, got down at the end, um, after four months, uh, and I'm talking about a hole. I'm talking, it's the size of my finger all the way down in the bone. It was black. It was ugly. If you saw the pictures, uh, it, you don't want to do it before you eat or after, right after you eat. It, it, was, it was disgusting. Um, I hope I haven't disgusted you all yet, but it was disgusting. And I remember, I remember the, the uh, podiatrist sitting in there. He looks down there and says, well, Mr. Taylor, I tell you what. I'm going to call this toe healed. And I said, before I, before I thought, I said, Doc, that's what I've been doing for four months. <laughs> I've been calling that toe healed in Jesus' name. He said, well, it worked. <laughs> you need, he even told me, you need to be a case study. Because he said, people in your situation do not keep their toe. And I said, well, glory to God. Because I know it was faith in the word of God. Hallelujah. That got me through. Amen. So I have my toe. Glory. I said, glory, glory, glory. Amen. And Janie's healed. She has no cancer in her. Um, hallelujah. Amen. And so, and we were going through all that at the same time. The enemy comes in like a flood. But the Spirit of God raises up a standard against him. And his word in our mouth brings us into victory. Hallelujah. His word. So we take no credit for us. It's the word. Faith comes from, he, he dealt to every man the measure of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It is putting into practice the things that he gave us. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What's our number one weapon? Amen. Is the words in our mouth of faith. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. The Bible says that, you know, if you look in, in, in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and look at the armor of God, there's one offensive weapon. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Hallelujah. We put God's Word. So that's why we say we don't have a choice as to whether or not we live by words, but we do have a choice as to what words we live by. Hallelujah. Can somebody out there give me a shout? Amen. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 5. Let's look, let's look at this as, a, in a, as an implied faith action. Uh, in Mark chapter 5. Starting in verse 21. It says, And when Jesus was passed over again by ship, to the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was <clears throat> nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and he besought him greatly, saying, My little girl lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Hallelujah. And when Jesus went with him, and much people followed him, and thronged him. Now, what we have here is we have two stories in one. Jairus comes to Jesus and says, my little girl's at the point of death. Come and lay hands on her. She'll be healed. Thank God that when we put faith in Jesus and his word and his power, we get results. Amen. Hallelujah. But then in the middle of this story, a woman with the issue of blood shows up, okay? So we have two things we're going to, share, we're going to talk about right here um, because they're going on at the same time. 
Um, and when Jesus went with him, much people followed him and thronged him. Meaning what? He's being knocked around on all sides by all kinds of people. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had, spent, had suffered many things of many physicians, spent all that she had, was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, now stop. You've got to hear of Jesus. You've got to know what the word says about God. You've got to know the character of God. Um, I like to cite an Episcopal or Anglican, really it's an Anglican study, American Church is Episcopal, um, it's the Church of England, study done during the height of what was referred to as the healing revival uh, in the early part of the uh, last century. They came back after a three-year study because they, 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 they considered it a phenomenon, people getting healed of all, crazy miracles. I mean, wild miracles going on all over the place in this revival that was going on. Um, a lot of the, most of it was going on in America. <clears throat> we saw Healy ministries like Oral Roberts and, and uh, Kenneth Hagan and so forth come out of that, uh, were, were part of that. Uh, Raymond T. Ritchie, F.F. F. Bosworth, many of the great pioneers of faith. Um, but they came back with this and they said, we can no longer use the faith-destroying phrase, if it be thy will, in relation to divine healing. Jesus only prayed that prayer in the place in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was praying about consecrating to the will of the Father to go to the cross. He never prayed it. Never prayed it. We have no record in the New Testament at all of it being prayed, if it be thy will, in relation to people being healed. Why? Because there's enough scripture out there to show us God wants you healed. Amen? Faith begins where the will of God is known. It's, you, you can't believe for something you're not sure he wants you to have. That's, that's simple. You can hope for it. You can wish for it. You can um, really want it to be so. But if you don't know, you can't have faith for it. That's a biblical principle in the New Testament. You have to know it's God's will in order to receive it. To have faith for it. Okay? So she heard of Jesus. Well, what did she hear? When you study the scriptures, you find out she heard he was healing people. There's even one place that people touched his garments and were getting healed. And when she heard of Jesus, um, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Now, interesting thing here is the Greek says, or the King James says, for she said, but the Greek really says, for she said and kept on saying. She said and kept on saying, if I can touch his clothes, I'll be whole. If I touch his clothes, I'll be whole. If I touch his clothes, I'll be whole. If I can touch his clothes, I'll be whole. If I can touch his clothes, I'll be whole. That's what, that's what was going on with her. And, um, and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? He knew somebody touched his clothes. And the disciples said, oh, this, 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 is new, this is the church world in some cases. They're always trying to find reasons or ways to talk you out of something. Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? Let me, let me, just, let me put that in modern English. Jesus, you didn't get enough sleep last night. Everybody in this crowd is touching you, and you're asking us who touched you? See, he wasn't asking about who touched him with curiosity. They weren't they didn't ask who touched him as a sensation seeker to say, I touched the, the guy who's out here preaching, the miracle worker, I'm the water walker. I'm not, he, he wasn't talking about those touches. He knew somebody had touched him with faith, and faith had released the virtue. 
See, if the resident power of God in Jesus would have healed anybody who touched them without faith, everybody in that crowd would have been getting healed that was thronging against him. But one person came in. One person got in <coughs> who was saying, if I can touch him, I'll be whole. If I can touch him, I'll be whole. If, if, their words were establishing their future, were establishing their destiny, were establishing their answer. Their words. Hallelujah. Now, let's take a little side journey right here. You remember the story where um, Jesus went into Peter's uh, uh, home or mother-in-law home and um, you know, the Bible says there were Pharisees and lawyers and doctors of the law for every town round about. And I love this. God's so cool in how he inspired the writers. And it says there were Pharisees, lawyers, doctors of, doctors of the law from every town round about. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Now, you study that whole thing out and none of them got healed. Then why was the power of the Lord present? Because God has made provision for us to walk in his blessings, but it takes on our end faith. And faith begins where the will of God is known. And the will of God is known through the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, the faith is the will of God is done through the word of God. And there came in a, a, a free people with a guy on a stretcher and by, couldn't get into the house because of the crowd. They climbed up on the roof, tore the roof off and let him down in the midst of Jesus. And the Bible says, and when Jesus saw their faith, when Jesus saw their faith, he saith to the man, he said to the man on the stretcher, uh, that sins be forgiven thee. He started a whole new doctrinal argument right there in the middle of all that whole thing. And they began, who can forgive sins but God alone? He said, why do you reason in your heart? Um, which is easy to say, your sins be forgiven you? Arise, take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sin. He saith to the sick of the palsy, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately he walked. He went out, they all sat around in stupor and just kind of went, we've seen great things today, but none of them got healed. What got that man healed was, well, it was his power. He saw their faith. It says he saw their faith. Amen. So let's go back over to the woman with the issue of blood. She touches his clothes. He wants to know who touched him. Disciples being so spiritual go, you, you see the multitude thronging you're asking who touched you. I can just, I can't even, um, I would love to see the expression on Jesus' face when he ignored them. Hallelujah. And uh, he looked around about to see, to, um, uh, look around about uh, to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. You see, she was illegally in that crowd. She had an issue of blood. She was considered. Um, she had to be quarantined. She couldn't come in contact with people. She was unclean. And she was supposed to cry out unclean. The words she was supposed to say was unclean, unclean. So people would avoid her. Instead, she was saying, if I can touch him, I'll be whole. If I can touch him, I'll be whole. If I can touch him, she didn't care. She got to that press and she's supposed to go, unclean, unclean. And she said, if I can touch him, I'll be whole. If I can touch him, I'll be whole. And she worked her way through that crowd and got and just touched his clothes. And the Bible says, immediately Jesus knew virtue went out. Healing power went out of him. And he said unto her daughter, Notice what, notice what he says next. He does not say, you were healed so I can prove I'm the son of God. You were healed because I chose today to make you whole. And we'll kick some sacred cows in the church out the window tonight. Jesus healed to prove he was the son of God. That's not what it says. Didn't say 
that it was his sovereign will just to heal her today. Well, his virtue, his virtue went out. But there's a reason his virtue went out. His virtue didn't go find her in the house and heal her in her bed. That virtue didn't heal that crowd who was standing around touching him. That virtue healed that woman who, when she heard of Jesus, got up out of that bed and said, if I can touch his clothes, I'll be whole. If I can touch his clothes, I'll be whole. If I can touch his clothes, I'll be whole. And Jesus says, daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Thy faith. Well, where did her faith come from? She heard of Jesus. She heard the word published about Jesus. We have the word of God. We hear about Jesus through the word of God. And then it has to change what we say. It changed what she, her words changed her situation so much. She took herself out of a bed where she was anemic, had been for 12 years having this flow of blood. Anemic, weak, unclean, had to hide from humanity. Wasn't supposed to be in public. He got up on her feet and went to her miracle glory to God because she said and kept on saying. Hallelujah. She could have laid there and said, well, if it's the Lord's will, I'll get healed. When Jesus comes to town, he'll, he'll heal me. Her faith got out of that bed. And her faith walked over to Jesus. And her faith touched the, his clothes. And the power of God was released into her. And Jesus said, your faith made you whole. Glory to God. And God is not a respecter of persons. Faith will work for everybody. Because God's dealt to every man the measure of faith. But you've got to work it. Hallelujah. You have to use it. You know, there's an interesting scripture in the book of Hebrews. Um, Hebrews chapter 10, I believe it is. Now, I believe Paul wrote Hebrews. A lot of people don't. That's all right. Doesn't really matter if you believe it or not. Um, it's not going to change it. It's Bible. <laughs> yeah. That's right. You get to heaven, you find that I'm right. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm having a, hard, a little bit of a hard time. I get the, the light that we're using. Um, I try to read the Bible, but right down and read my Bible, and uh, it's, it's got circles. And so I'm trying to find something that's not quietly as easy as it. Um, okay. I thought it was Hebrews 10. I'm having a hard time finding it. Hard time finding it. Um, but it says this, it says the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith. If y'all could find that for me, give me that scripture reference. The word spoken did not profit them not being mixed with faith. Think about that. God's word can profit you or not profit you. You have to mix something with it. Glory to God. That woman had not mixed faith with what she heard. She was still she would die in that bed. Hebrews four two. Why did I, why did I think? I don't know why I thought it was Tim. Okay. Hebrews four two. Let, uh, Hebrews four one. Let us therefore, um, let us therefore fear or be in awe, lest a promise being left of us entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Don't let people talk you out of faith. Don't let them excuse and use some kind of excuse. God's sovereign. He can do what he wants to do to talk you out of faith. <clears throat> the sovereignty of God is, it's been already exercised and that he gave us his word to act on in faith and we'll get our answer from him. God does not look at you and go, 
well, I'm not going to heal you, but I'm going to heal this one. Just because I don't like, I want to. It's just, and, and yeah, you're in faith and you're believing me, but I'm just not going to do it. God doesn't work that way. Hallelujah. All the promises of God, I'm going to quote Wayne with translation, whatever their number, find the yes in him and our amen acknowledges its truth to the glory of God in us. Uh, that is the, um, the um, way with translation of, of King James. It says, all the promises of God in him are yea and in him, amen. Hallelujah. And uh, Weymouth says it differently. He says, all the promises of God find the yes in him. And our amen acknowledges its truth to the glory of God in us. Amen means so be it. I come into agreement with it. Okay. I, it's not just a phrase we use when we like the point the preacher just made. Okay, and it's, it's not a it's not a preacher response word. It is a covenant word. It is a an agreement word. Amen. So be it. I agree. Hallelujah. Um, daughter, go and thy faith has made thee whole. Go and uh, go in peace and behold thy plague. Okay, so here so here's a story. Now forget don't forget we were talking about Jairus. Jairus's daughter's dying. And uh, he comes to get Jesus. And Jesus says he's on the way with him. But the woman shows up. And we have this whole event with the woman with the issue of blood. You know, you know, there's a clamor going on. This woman's all of a sudden healed, you know. And uh, and then uh, right after that, um, while he yet spake, in other words, he's still talking to the woman. There came a rule. Uh, um, while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house a uh, certain, which means certain people, which said, thy daughter is dead, why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. He had to stop his mouth before he said the wrong thing. They said, your daughter's dead, don't bother him anymore. Jesus says, don't, just believe. Don't be afraid, believe. He did not allow those words of unbelief to get in and begin to control the circumstance. He put a stop to it right there. Don't be afraid, believe. Well, believe is, is, um, is the verb form of faith. It's the same, it's a Greek word. It comes out of the Pistis word group, P-I-S-T-I-S. -I -S. comes out of that uh, Pisteo, Pistis. It, it, those words are faith, belief, used interchangeably, noun and verbs, okay? So he said this, he said, it's like saying, um, don't be afraid, keep your faith in action. Interesting statement is made in, in Hebrew, uh, Isaiah chapter 52, right before the, uh, the, um, the 53rd chapter, the chapter of uh, the suffering servant, Jesus the redemptive chapter of Isaiah. But it says there in the, in the end of um, chapter 52, <clears throat> it said, who will, uh, who will believe our report? To whom is the, um, uh, let me, I, I'm getting ready to misquote it, so I'm going to go back and grab Isaiah real quick. I'm sorry, Isaiah 53, 2 starts out, who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? <clears throat> and then we've got a little, little song that we sing in the church sometimes. Whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. Whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to believe the report of the certain that came from your house that said, why are you troubling the master? Your daughter's dead. But the master stopped. Because see, he had already come to Jesus and said, Come lay hands on my daughter that she may be healed. See, he already, he already told us where our, his faith is. His faith is if Jesus comes and lays hands on her, she'll live. Amen? He's already, hey, that's where he is. He's already told us that. We got interrupted. They come up and say, hey, don't bother me where she's dead. Now you got, we're in a crisis here because we've got, I'm believing for this, and here comes a report contrary to it. And Jesus knew 
that if he did not stop his mouth, it would be over. And that's why the Bible, God didn't just put that in there just to take up space so we could have more words in the Bible. Hello? He said, don't be afraid. Only believe. Or we could say it this way. Don't be afraid. Stay in faith. Hallelujah. <clears throat> if we took everything out of the Bible that people say, God don't do anymore, or that's not what it really means. Be like that little girl who came to church one day. She, she came to church and, and pastor saw her coming out of church after church. And um, he said, her Bible, all she had was the cover to her Bible. He said, honey, what happened to your Bible? Um, no, he was going into church. He's he greeting people as they're coming. He said, honey, what happened to your Bible? She said, oh, by, oh, by the pastor, you know, every time you said that, that God doesn't do this or that God doesn't belong to us today, I tore those pages out of my Bible, and I expect to lose the cover this morning. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. We can't be like that. God's word is true. God's word is eternal. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are unseen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Forever settled in heaven. They don't change. I am the Lord and I change not. Let me say this. The Lord's word doesn't change. The Father and his word are one. Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Or help me, Jesus, or something. And he suffered or allowed no man to follow him, save Peter, James, and John. Now, let me, let me modernize that. He didn't, like, he did, at that point, he did that. Anybody else come with him except Peter, James, and John. Hallelujah. And the brethren, and, they come, and he comes to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeth the tumult. You know, the, 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 the mourners had already shown up. Oh, oh, well, you can tell they're not really true emotion. They're just being paid to do it. And then that wept and wailed greatly. Oh, we're just out there putting on a show. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, why you make this ado and weep? The damsel's not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. They went from, oh, ah, he's crazy. So you can tell they're not really emotional about this. This is just some made-up stuff. And, um, but when he put them all out, wow. Sometimes you've got to get the unbelief out of the room. Now, I'm going to tell you something. There are times I'm going through stuff, I don't share it with a bunch of people. Why? Because there's a bunch of people who are the whalers and they're making the do folk and making a tumult that are full of unbelief. And they'll hurt your faith. You got to put them out. In other words, you can't just sit there and listen to them. And they'll be telling you just don't know why the Lord did this. He's got a reason for doing this. Really? Please be better Bible student than that. Don't let people put that traditional stuff in you that they don't have scripture for. Jesus said the thief comes to kill, still destroy. He said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. It didn't say that God was making him sick. And the devil was healing them. You got people say that. You got preachers who'll say that people are laying hands on people and get them healed or of the devil. Bozos. I don't know what else to call you. Just because you didn't have faith in something, don't go robbing out of everybody else. I'm serious here. This these whalers. And mourners and making all this tumult. And then when he said she's not dead, she's asleep, they're laughing at him to scorn. He's crazy. That, woman, that girl is dead. He can hear him walking out the door. 
I mean, in a modern church, you'd hear him go, go, go call the police. Get him out of here. That, that man is dead. That baby, that girl's dead. He's going to upset the family. So he took Peter, James, and John, went in with the parents, <clears throat> put everybody outside because he didn't need that unbelief in there. He taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him, that's Peter, James, and John, and entered in where the damsel lie, was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha kumi, kumni, kumi. Uh, we believe that might be an Aramaic term, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. Now remember, he did not, as far as we can tell, that father never said another word after Jesus said, don't be afraid, only believe. Because he'd already said, you lay hands on her and she'll live. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of 12, and they were astonished with great astonishment. I bet they were. But what got this move was the, the father coming to Jesus and saying, come, lay hands on my daughter and she'll live. And Jesus wouldn't let him change his confession. Hallelujah. Jesus didn't give him the opportunity to change what he was going to say. Because if he had hooked up with the people who said she was dead, Jesus wouldn't have been able to do anything. God could do anything he wants to do. Have you ever read the scripture? Where it says he could there do no mighty work. He could not. Didn't say he wouldn't. Said he couldn't. But you know why? He marveled because of their unbelief. Believe this in Matthew. It says he could there do no mighty work. Say he laid his hand on a few sick folk. Uh, actually sickly. Folks with minor ailments. And healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Unbelief will stop the power of God. God can do anything he wants to. He doesn't override your will and he doesn't override your faith. And he doesn't work in unbelief. All things are possible to them that believeth. Hello? Hello? Amen. Remember, uh, loved it, watching uh, Brother Fred, Fred Price always finishes his programs when he's on television all over. And it said, remember these words from, um, oh, I forgot what scripture he actually quoted. He says, uh, for we walk by faith and not by sight. See, it's a faith walk. I mean, Romans something. Hallelujah. He said, he always finishes his program that way. Faith preacher. Amen. How they built the faith dome. Called it, they called it the faith dome. Hallelujah. Out there um, at, on, at the Crenshaw Christian Center, on Pepper, Old Pepperdine University. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. There you go. For we walk by faith and not by sight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, that's quoted somewhere in that form three times in the New Testament. There's three different, three different places in the New Testament is quoted. Hallelujah. What? Evidence? Does your life have enough evidence? Shut up. Okay. They don't want me singing solo. Hallelujah. Boy, I wish y'all could hear the cut the cheap seats over here. We're trying to get people in the church, you know, not run them off. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our words determine our future. Our words spoken through our tongue reduce our future. Amen. So we have two stories here. Woman with the issue of blood, Jairus, is, uh, ruler of the synagogue. His daughter, come lay hands on her, she'll be healed. Jesus wouldn't stop them from changing that confession. One with the issue of blood. If I can touch her, I'll be whole. She didn't let the circumstances change her confession. 
And both of them got their answers from God by faith in his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, we're so glad y'all could join us tonight. Uh, trust you were blessed. And um, how the time has gone. I mean, it has flown by. I didn't even realize we were this late. Hallelujah. So uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, it's time for our weekly offering. You know, we do electronically, obviously, during the week. Actually, about 70% of our congregation is giving electronically now. Um, people just like the ease of being able to hit a button and boom, you know. Uh, praise the Lord. But uh, through Square, uh, the, the Cash app, or through PayPal, you can give to the church. That, that slide will show up on your screen eventually. All right, it's already up there. And we welcome, we, we welcome you to join with us and support us. Um, support Faith and Victory Church here in Greensboro. And um, praise the Lord. Uh, let's pray over the offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless the people as they give, as they tithe. We thank you that heaven's windows are open unto them. And you empty out blessings they don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Uh, don't forget to join us Sunday at 1230. Uh, again, we, we are currently still meeting at New Life Family Church on Sunday afternoons at 1230. Um, due to the, our, our place that we were, we, the, the community center we were using is still closed to meetings. Um, we don't know if that's going to change. <coughs> but um, in the interim, we're going to continue meeting there at New Life. Uh, Pastor Bob and his, his uh, wonderful congregation have been graciously opened up their church to us to use. And we're thankful. Hallelujah. So you can join us in person if you can. Uh, join us again online the next time we're together, Sundays, Wednesdays. And then um, if you'd like to be part of our, our prayer time, um, e email the church at uh, office at fvc.org. And we will uh, we give us your, your phone number so we can send out a text for our Zoom prayer meeting. Hallelujah. Until we meet again, remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. God bless you. Stay, would y'all stop laughing while I'm trying to close? <laughs> In Jesus' name, amen. We love you. God bless you. See you next time here at Faith and Victory Church online.